you have off-page issues, which are off-page factors, which are signals that Google uses that are not on your website at all. And you can have some influence over, but you don't have absolute control over how people right. link to you, whether they link to you, the uh, placement of the links, the anchor text they use in the link, uh, the, the underlying words, in other words, all of that is you know, in integrated into the rankings algorithm. Welcome to the Schweiki Media Expert webinar series where we team up with leading marketing and publishing experts to provide you with tips and best practices to help you grow your business and stay on the cutting edge. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. I'm here again today with Stefan Spencer, and Stefan is an internationally recognized SEO expert and best-selling author. He is the co-author of The Art of SEO, author of Google Power Search, and co-author of Social E-Commerce, all published by O'Reilly. The Art of SEO, now in its third edition and weighing in at nearly 1,000 pages, is considered the Bible on search engine optimization and boasts testimonials from such industry giants such as Seth Godin and Tony Shea, and is even used as textbook uh, and even used as a textbook at universities. Stefan also hosts the biohacking and life hacking podcast, The Optimized Geek, as well as the online marketing focused podcast, Marketing Speak. Stefan has spoken at countless hundreds of internet marketing events, including all the major search and e-commerce conferences, such as SES, SMX, PubCon, Internet Retailer, Shop.org, and Etail. He's been a contributor to the Huffington Post, Multi-Channel Merchant, Practical E-Commerce, Search Engine Land, DM News, and Marketing Profs, among many others. And today, we are going to be talking about ranking your site. How the heck do I do this? Stefan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. That was a really long bio. I should shorten it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's because you have done a lot. <laughs> so uh, you work this hard to, to get, get all that on there, and then you shorten it, right? Yeah. So, uh, but I guess that's when you know you made it. <laughs> when you got to shorten your bio. Well, yeah. Obviously, uh, this is something that pretty much I'd say 90, 95 percent of businesses, um, unless you're just selling. Uh, products through like Facebook ads, something like that. Ranking your site um, is paramount to uh, success, or it will paramount to making success a lot easier for yourself. So, um, want to obviously dig in with how companies can accomplish this, and and I believe that there's offline and uh, on-site and off-site uh, things that we can do here. But let's first just start off by working. Um, walking us through best practices here for starting what should be done on-site, and then we'll move to some off-site activities. Yeah, yeah, and so this is, uh, let me just pause for a second and share uh, kind of the overall structure for our listeners that you have off-page issues, which are off-page factors, which are signals that Google uses that are not on your website at all, and you can have some influence over, but you don't have absolute control over how people link to you, whether they link to you, the uh, placement of the links, the anchor text they use in the link, uh, the, the underlying words, in other words, all of that is you know, in integrated into the rankings algorithm. And then there are the on-page factors, the things that you can ultimately control, like how you uh, write your title tags and whether you uh, use schema.org uh, markup or if you are using redirects or um, canonical tags, canonical link elements, all sorts of geeky stuff like that that is on your site. So those are the two big buckets. And then as far as best practices are concerned, um, you know, here's the thing is that you can focus on the stuff that is supposedly best practice and not really make a difference to your business. Kind of like you remember when you were given busy work at school by your teacher because uh, he or she was just tired and didn't want to hear anything from the students for a while. Well, you don't want to be working on the busy work sort of side of SEO. You want to do stuff that is really going to move the needle. So that could be uh, – you know, being more outcome focused with your SEO instead of just activity focused. 
Most SEOs, mm -hmm. unfortunately, are activity focused. So I can give you a list of best practices that are things that are you know, known to be good practices, things that you should employ. But frankly, if they're not going to move the needle that much, why even do it? You know, it's like, oh, I could optimize my meta descriptions, but they're actually not a, they're not a ranking signal. So do mm -hmm. I make that um, change to my meta description or do I focus on things that are really going to make a bigger difference, like the title tag? Yeah, that's what I say. Let's start like with the low hanging fruit, meaning not just the easiest tasks to do, but the easy, the ones you can take care of that you should take care of right away. Uh, what, what are some of like just like, hey, you got to do this, this, and this? And then you're right, like meta descriptions. Those are more uh, human factors to people to click through. But if you're not ranking <laughs> organically, then those are pointless to spend your time there. So, uh, yeah, what, what are some of the main things you should, hey, make sure your site architecture or your HTML or your site speed or what would you pay most attention to from the get-go? Yeah, well, that's going to depend on a lot of different things. So I'll give you a generic answer, but let's say you're running on WordPress. My answers will be different for you than if you are running on some convoluted CMS that's really difficult to manage and to make changes to. Um, okay. It will depend on the size of your site. If you're, um, you know, the size of Zappos or somebody, you know, which you know, I've worked with and helped them with their SEO, very different ball game than if you have a 50-page website or a 15-page website. So um, mm -hmm. I'll just give you some. Uh, really basic, low-hanging fruit sort of things that you can focus on as a starting point. So let's okay. say that um, you don't know how fast loading your pages are. That's an easy thing to address. Just go to a couple of free tools. Like, for example, um, there's a, a tool called webpagetest.org. That's uh, mm -hmm. very helpful. Uh, it will tell you how fast things are loading and what's kind of clogging the pipes up in terms of uh, your page speed. And uh, then there's a tool free from Google called PageSpeed Insights. And we can you know, include links in, in the episode show notes so that people can uh, uh, get right to those tools, but you can easily find them just by Googling for them too. Like, type in page speed insights into Google and you'll find it. It's the first result. And it's a free okay. tool from Google. And you, you put in your URL and you see how you score. And if you're in the red zone or in the yellow zone, I would work on improving your page speed. Um, what are some easy things that you could do to improve your page speed? Well, your images probably could be compressed more and made smaller. So that's a super easy one. You just load in uh, your images into your favorite uh, image editor, like Photoshop or whatever, and change the, the compression and maybe crop the image and what have you and, and resave it so it's a uh, smaller file size. I've seen images on websites as big as six megabytes, which is crazy, like on the home page even. Um, so that's that's an easy one. Um, there are other things you can do, like turn on gzip compression, but you probably need a, um, a systems administrator to help you with that sort of stuff. That's more the configuration of your web server. Um, mm -hmm. Now, this is going to help you not just with SEO, but also with conversion. So that's an extra bonus. You're going to get much better conversion rates with your website if you have a faster loading website. Um, another thing you can do is go into Google Search Console, and that's another free tool from Google. There's a report in there where you can see all the 404 error pages. Okay, so 404 error pages would be uh, pages per potentially that you took offline because the product was discontinued or you moved stuff around. Let's say you had a site redesign and uh, everything shifted or you changed from one CMS, one content management system to another. So those would be examples of cases where you're creating 404 error pages. 
And unfortunately, when you have a 404 error page where there are links pointing to that previously existing page, but the ex page exists no longer, you'll squander uh, or miss out on the page rank, the link equity that was flowing to your site through that page. So when you, somebody links to a page and you take that page offline, you 404 it, that page rank, that link equity gets evaporated or just lost, which is a real mm -hmm. missed opportunity. So super easy, low-hanging fruit <clears throat> for an on-page uh, optimization would be just go into Google Search Console. And by the way, if you do not have Google Search Console set up for your website, this is the most easiest of low-hanging fruit to go after just verify your site, and then you're going to start collecting data and getting um, insights that you wouldn't have any from any other place. Like, for example, this is how Google lets you know if you have a manual penalty, what they call manual action. You won't find out if you got a manual penalty any other way but to go into your Google Search Console account. If you don't have Google Search Console set up, how are you going to find out if you got a manual penalty? Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is the search analytics report inside of Google Search Console is amazing. There's data in there that you can't get anywhere else. Impressions, where people saw your search listing in Google but didn't click, you'll get that data for free from Google. And you just have to go in and um, claim yourself as a, as a site owner of your site. And until you do, until you have somebody setting up that um, website in Google Search Console, there's no data being collected. The moment you start that is the moment you start getting that data, and it's only for a maximum of 90 days. So there are tools like um, Rank Ranger, which will pull in the data from Google Search Console through their API, and this is an ongoing thing where you can, over time, collect years worth of data from Google Search Console and not just rely on the last 90 days, which Google gives you. Um, but that would require that you have an additional third-party tool like Rank Ranger. And, um, you know, it's a paid tool, excellent tool. I highly recommend it. It does rankings tracking and a bunch of other stuff. But this is um, you know, really valuable data, not only to see where uh, you're showing up in the search results, what your average position is, and how many impressions of your search listings are um, getting viewed by Google searchers, but also how many clicks are happening. And you can see, like, these are the keywords that are really driving impressions, but not clicks. These are the keywords that are driving a lot of clicks to my website. This is so valuable, and it's just sitting there waiting for you to, to access it. So get a Search Console account if you don't already. And uh, for those of you who already have it, so now back to the topic of 404 error pages, you go into the URL errors and find the file not found um, 404s in, in that section of Google Search Console. And then you uh, can see where these pages that are errors are getting links from. A lot of times it'll just be internal links, and sometimes there'll be external links where people are linking from the outside to your site, and that's definitely something you want to fix. Um, even when you have internal links, you want to fix that too, because for one thing, you don't want broken links on your website. That doesn't look good to users. It doesn't look good to Google. And if you, if you have a house on the, in a nice neighborhood and it has broken windows, and it has graffiti on the door and stuff like that, not a good look, right? It mm -hmm. makes the whole neighborhood look bad, uh, certainly your house. You don't want to have that kind of situation with your website. So fix any internal broken links. You can use uh, free uh, tools for broken link checking, like uh, Xenu Link Sleuth or Screaming Frog is uh, a paid tool, but they give you, uh, uh, for small sites, a, a free version of it. You can um, check up to 500 pages. 
So if you have a small site with fewer than 500 pages, you can use Screaming Frog for free. Okay. So, awesome. um, yeah, if, uh, if you go in there, you see that these are 404 pages are getting links, either internally or externally or both, then you can fix those 404 pages, um, redirect them to uh, a nearby relevant page on your site, and recapture that link equity. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. There's plenty of other things, but let's. Uh, let's no, no, no. But I mean, you've given. Uh, I know you probably talk about this all the time, but I mean, I hear what you're saying, and a lot of the time, uh, you might need to, you know, obviously have someone a little bit technical either within your company, or you might need to reach out to an SEO firm that, you know, is applying some of these tools. But all this stuff will be identified either through another company or somebody internally. Um, and this will make a lot of sense to them. And what Stefan's doing is pointing everybody in the right direction, where to go to look to find this stuff, and then you got to just go and, and, and clean it up because those are – you got to get you got to get everything set up right, uh, you know, to give yourself the benefit of all the, uh, you know, out, inbound efforts from links that we'll be getting into here in a bit. But, no, you've given some great stuff. Now, one thing I would like to have you touch on is, you know, the HTML markups. Um, because I believe a lot of times people might not have anything tagged on their site, um, you know, let alone having a meta description. They might not have, you know, the the an individual service page tagged correctly or their home page tagged correctly, uh, let alone the you know all the blogs or whatever they might be doing or images or whatnot. So can you touch on that for a bit as well? Yeah, sure thing. So um, let me first of all distinguish the HTML tags that matter versus, uh, versus the ones that don't from an Please. SEO standpoint. <clears throat> so you probably have heard of H1 tags and uh, that they're good for SEO. Well, they actually have really no impact on your SEO. What has the impact is whether this uh, headline is prominent in the page, like rendered prominently, it's in a large font size, et cetera, and its placement. If it's high up on the page, visible above the fold versus you have to scroll, scroll, scroll to finally get to that H1, it doesn't matter whether it's H1 or it matters that it's a prominent headline. So that's called keyword prominence. So that's something that matters. <clears throat> and that's not actually HTML markup per se, that's the layout of the page. The okay. fact that the HTML markup says that this is an H1 is really just for your own benefit so that you can identify that, okay, this is my major headline versus the H2s, which are subheads, versus H3s, which are sub-subheads, et cetera. And then you decide the font treatment, the style that you apply, the styling that you apply to uh, those different types of headlines. So what matters is the keyword prominence. There's another thing called keyword density that used to be talked about um, in SEO but it was never really an important factor. It doesn't matter that, um, let's say you have an average of 3.5 for your keyword phrase for a particular page. It's, re it's really ridiculous to even measure that, to say that, well, um, I've got four occurrences of this word and two occurrences of this other word in my phrase and um, one occurrence of the exact phrase and then it does some calculation to figure out what your keyword density is. It's ridiculous. It really is a waste of time. Okay. So don't think about keyword density. Think about keyword prominence. Okay. If you have a page that is all about blue widgets, and you talk about blue, <clears throat> and you talk about blue widgets in the first paragraph. You're going to rank better than if you didn't mention it until the very last paragraph. Like, oh, I forgot to tell you, this whole page was about blue widgets. <laughs> right? So that's not even getting into the HTML tagging yet. That's just good, thoughtful um, content writing for SEO as well as for humans. What you create for humans should be good for SEO. What you create for SEO should be good for humans. If it's only for one party, one camp, and not the other camp, you're doing something wrong. Should enhance both the usability and the SEO. Okay. So back to your question about which sort of tags matter. 
uh, from an on-page uh, standpoint, the title tag is the most important element, most important tag on the page. That's um, where you're, you're gonna really help set the keyword focus for the page. But then you need to reinforce that keyword focus or keyword theme elsewhere in the page, right? That's where the keyword prominence comes in. If you drop in uh, an important keyword into the title tag, and then nowhere else on the page, it doesn't really look that compelling that this page is all about that topic, right? Mm -hmm. It just looks like you just kind of did a little SEO and said, oh, I want to work in an extra keyword in there. I hope I rank for it. I'll drop it into the title tag where it gets the most weight. And then there's Burr mentioned of, there's no mention anywhere else on the page of that keyword or even a related synonym, then it's not likely you're going to rank on, on page one for, for that keyword, at least if it's at all popular and, and competitive, therefore. So the title tag, most important. Then you have all sorts of other tags that have varying levels of importance to Google, like all attributes of image tags. Right? So when you mouse over an image and it shows you a little bit of text, that's the alt text. So all attributes are um, given some weight, but they're not super important. Much more important would be the anchor text of a text link versus the alt attribute of an image link. So you have an image that's also a link. You can click on it and it takes you to another page and you have an alt attribute for that image. It's better as far as SEO if you had a text link there and it had the keywords in, in that anchor text versus an image with an alt attribute. It's good practice to have alt attributes and to have them be valuable to users, like people who are visually impaired using a screen reader, those alt attributes will be read out loud by the screen reader um, software. So make it useful and not just spam keywords into the uh, keyword stuff into the alt attribute that's a no-no. Make it useful for humans. And that's an opportunity to be very uh, specific, explicit about what you uh, are conveying in that image. What uh, is that image about? What is it a picture of? And put that into the alt attribute, but like I said, the anchor text is um, more important than alt attributes if we're dealing with uh, uh, an image link versus a text link. Always uh, go for a text link if you, if you care about SEO. And as far as like where those text links go, um, you know, either validate or invalidate what I'm going to say here, but you're going to want to you know, you want to either have your home page or specific service pages ranking. Uh, you know, if you're a company that has, you know, three or four services or whatever, you're going to want to try to point, you know, in, intra linking to another page on your site and, and do that as much as it correctly makes sense to do so. Is that a good practice to yes. implement? Yes. Yeah, so um, it, it is. And let me um, show you two ways that this would be applied in practice. So let's say that, um, so first way would be how you are linking from your home page to services or products from that home page. So that matters. And then also the placement of the links on any page matters. So if you put it down at the bottom of the page, it doesn't get as much weight as if you put it up at the top of the page. Just like when I was describing keyword prominence and how having a headline at the top of the page or having a keyword in the first paragraph is better than in the last paragraph, it also matters in terms of the length on the page. So there's that aspect. And then there's also the page that matters the most as far as the search engines are concerned, typically, is the home page. So don't squander that opportunity that you have with your home page by making it a contentless 
practically link uh, free page, put your most important services, products, uh, landing pages, articles, et cetera, feature those on your homepage. Like the bottom of it where it says featured blogs or our services don't just have it be a drop down, actually have like a nice square circular image or whatever that you can hover over and click through to the service page. Is that what you're describing? Yes, and based on what I just described about the alt attributes and text links, you want to have not only the image leading to that page uh, that's you know clickable, but also a text link above or below it that has good keywords in it describing what that post or article like or once sort of snippet it. like what the services are about you know yeah, here are email, email marketing right. services designed blah 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 and hyperlink email marketing that goes to that service page in addition to the image that will directly go there is that what you're saying yep i mean okay. it could be as simple as like our email marketing services and that's the text link gotcha don't uh, get really um, too over optimized with it and like take every, like oh this is an important phrase email marketing let's link to a page on our site uh, with that text and oh here's a mention of SEO let's link that word SEO to our SEO services page and that looks over optimized if it looks like it's designed more for Google than it is for human consumption you're doing it wrong okay so looks a lot more natural and like it's designed for humans if you have a useful image leading to your email marketing services page and then you have our email marketing services as the text link underneath it that's that looks normal looks looks like it's designed for humans but you have a paragraph a little paragraph of text and then you have just the words email marketing uh, as the anchor text leading to your email marketing services page, that looks like you hired an SEL. That's a great point, Stefan. I haven't heard that before. Um, to, that's a great pointer. I, I didn't realize that actually anchor texting, you know, underneath like a service image, because um, you're going to want to have some sort of snippet, you know, even if it's just simple words, email marketing, right, or email marketing services or whatever. Um, yeah, great point. I, I hadn't um, heard that from anyone else. Um, yeah, so, so think of it this way, like if this looks over optimized, like an SEO was in charge rather than a usability expert or a copywriter, you're doing it wrong. There are okay. plenty of home pages on the internet where you go uh, scroll, scroll, scroll for a bit and then finally uh, you see this wall of text down near the footer and nobody's going to want to read it because it kind of reads like this, like, uh, you know, welcome to our email marketing services company. We provide email marketing tools and uh, email marketing consulting and our uh, email services are some of the best out there. And if you're looking to uh, get email marketing best practices and all, all this stuff is like hyperlinked, right? So mm -hmm. it looks like it was uh, created purely for search engines and not for human consumption. That puts a big target on your back and uh, makes Google not very impressed with your website. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, very cool. Uh, in the spirit of time, I believe we have about 15, 20 minutes left here. Uh, let's get to some off-page action items now. I think okay. you've done a fantastic job here. Of, and with that being said, and you'll, I know you'll say it, there's probably another 10 hours of you could talk about this stuff. So there's a lot to other stuff to pay attention to. Uh, you obviously can continue to follow Stefan, download some of his books, uh, and learn all the nuances. But feel like you've given an, uh, some good low-hanging fruit starting points for people to, hey, at least go take care of this stuff. Now come back and learn some other stuff. So, but let's let's talk about some off-page action items. Like okay. what can now this – got everything set up as well as you can. Obviously, it's never going to be 100% perfect or you can try to get close, but there's always going to be ongoing stuff. But getting these off-page factors to help you out are going to be the big-time needle movers. So – Let's um, let's have you share your wisdom there. 
Yeah, so one of the first things that you want to do is like figure out if your um, if your trust or your importance or both are you know kind of down down in the uh, uh, down in the basement level or you're doing reasonably well with one or both of them. So a great tool that you can use for free just to get this data. It's a paid tool, but they give you uh, some data for free, is Majestic.com. You put in your website, uh, your domain name into Majestic.com, and it will tell you your trust flow and your citation flow. Citation flow is um, the Majestic uh, kind of approximation of PageRank and it's an importance metric. And then your trust flow is just like it sounds, it's a, a trust metric. It's an approximation of trust rank. And both of these metrics are on a logarithmic scale, like a Richter scale, like page rank back in the day when you could get the little green meter in your Google toolbar. Um, so five out of 10 is not halfway. Right, it's really quite low in comparison to even a seven, very low in comparison to a seven. So same thing applies when you're talking about trust flow and citation flow. Let's say you have a a 20. You might think, oh, that doesn't sound too bad, 20 out of 100. Well, yeah, that's pretty bad when you consider that that's on a logarithmic scale. It's not 20% of the way. Uh, it's you know, imagine a mountain that's basically at base camp. Mm -hmm. It's at the bottom of the mountain still. So first, you got to figure out where, how do you, where do you stand? How are you? How do you fare? So that's a great, easy, fast way to check. Just go to majestic.com, put in your domain name. So now you know the metrics, the trust flow and citation flow scores for your website. Now you can start making some changes. And if it's a very low score, like under 20, uh, then this is probably your Achilles heel. Unless you are only concerned about ranking for very unpopular keywords that very few people are searching for and very few people are competing to rank for, you're going to have a hard time. Like a trust flow score in the teens or in the single digits doesn't deserve to rank for uh, a, a competitive high value keyword. Just, you know, it's just the way it is. Now this is, take, consider that this is a third party tool. Majestic is um, approximating Google's page rank and not giving uh, you, know, you an inside view into what's happening in the Google Plus. But it's, an, it's a very useful approximation. And so if you're, doing really poorly in terms of your trust or your importance, this is a big problem. This is a big, big problem. This is your Achilles heel. And you could have all sorts of issues with your website, your on-page stuff, things that we talked about in the beginning of the episode, like uh, you know, your, your titles aren't very good or your keyword prominence isn't very good or um, the way that you're linking to other pages isn't very good. You know, using click here or read more instead of using uh, good keywords or you're not linking to your most important pages from your home page. Yeah, all that matters, but it pales in comparison to this issue. If you have very low trust, more importance, doesn't, doesn't really add up to... Well, how, do you, how do you improve that trust and importance? Yeah, well, you got to get amazing links. Okay. Really, really powerful links. You can get a whole lot of really garbage links pretty easily. You can even pay for them, which I would never, ever recommend you do. That's a great way to end up with a manual penalty or a, uh, an algorithmic penalty. But getting really high quality links is hard work and right. requires creativity. So let me give you a couple of examples of campaigns that um, really crushed it for clients of mine so you can get a sense for what 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 really will move the needle versus the super basic stuff that just doesn't 
do much for anything, anybody. Like, uh, for example, the, the sort of things that would be easy and, and not really moving the needle would be getting a link from your local chamber of commerce, getting a link from your convention and visitors bureau in your area, getting a link from a local directory in your area. It's like, okay, that's, it that doesn't really hurt unless it's a spammy site that's linking to you. But is that gonna help you rank uh, for a high value competitive keyword that's just, you know, let's say a national uh, keyword? No, it's not. So really focus on the stuff that's gonna make the big difference. You know, it's the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, focus on the 20% of the links that could uh, give you 80% of the benefit. So let me give you a couple of, of quick examples of campaigns that really did amazing for my clients. One was a uh, contest for overnightprints.com. They print business card letterhead stationery overnight, ship it next day air. And um, at the time, they were not ranking anywhere for business cards. And that was the trophy term that they really wanted to rank for. I came up with this idea of a contest. And when you're creating uh, campaign ideas for content marketing, for link building, you need to think outside the box. You need to come up with stuff that's remarkable, that's worth remarking about, and not just um, stuff that's you know, me too sort of stuff. If everybody else and, and his brother is doing it, well, that's not going to stand out and um, get you noticed and get you links. If it's just good content, then there's the, the web is awash with good content. You have to be remarkable. So a couple of things about this campaign that were remarkable. Um, one was the hook of you, you could win free business cards for life. So the contest was called the free business cards for life contest. Sounds really impressive, right? Free business cards for life. Well, in the small print is for up to 20 years and it was a thousand business cards per year. Very uh, minimal investment on my client's part to, um, you know, in terms of uh, this prize. The other thing that was really remarkable about this uh, campaign was I came up with a, um, an MC for this contest. And that was a major online celebrity, an influencer, and um, uh, somebody who had a big following is Jeremy Shoemaker. His nickname is Shoe Money. That's his blog, <laughs> shoemoney.com. Uh, and he's got a big following. He's famous for being very successful online. He's made eight figures through um, his online marketing and uh, is a real rags to riches story. Very, very successful and uh, very inspiring to a lot of people. <clears throat> so if um, you could imagine that we've got him on board and he didn't charge my client anything to participate because I um, designed this contest to scratch his own itch, to help him um, as well as to help my client. And so the, the, the contest was designed around designing Jeremy's new business card. And you could win <laughs> business cards for life. Did fantastic. Got tons of links. Uh, what, did the link, where did the links come from? Like what? Design sites and, and uh, fans of, of Jeremy. Uh, and did you them. outreach to them or was it all from Jeremy sending it out or did you do anything to help facilitate that happening? We did not do outreach. You know, back uh, then there weren't really that great of tools for scaling outreach. Like the Pitchbox, for example, is a fantastic outreach mm -hmm. tool for scaling your link building outreach back in the day mm -hmm. uh, that we did this that didn't exist. But you would do that today? Yeah, that would be part of the process. But um, <clears throat> okay. we relied very heavily on uh, Jeremy's community picking up on this contest and running with it and buzzing about it on social media and linking to it from their blogs and so forth. And 
that happened. And of course, Jeremy helped Hutto quite a lot too by promoting it on his blog and on his social media. He did a post on his, a video post on his YouTube channel, et cetera. And so the end result for Jeremy was he got this amazing new business card, a super awesome looking business card that was, that was the winner. And uh, we got uh, for my clients, a number two ranking in Google for business cards. Wow. So that was amazing. Yeah, from nowhere, from like sub page five, ten, like really deep. And um, and the um, yeah, so it was a win-win for everybody. And uh, so that's one example of a campaign. Okay. And um, another example is uh, uh, a life coaching directory called Numi, N-O-O-M-I-I.com. And the, the campaign was around um, acts of kindness. And the hook, the thing that made this remarkable was it was an advent calendar. So normally with an advent calendar, like you pick up it from Walgreens, you get a chocolate every day of advent. There's a little door that you open in this little cardboard thing and you your child gets a little piece of chocolate each day of Advent. So you're getting something. Now flip that around and say, well, instead, let's give something each day of Advent. And each day we'll have a different challenge uh, for you to, uh, or act of kindness challenge for, for you to, to do. And there is a big button that you can click to say that you did that ch uh, challenge, that you did that thing for the day. And also, um, if you um, uh, wanted to write a little story about it or comments, um, then you could uh, uh, do that too. It's all based on WordPress, but very cute design with you know, illustrations, and it was it was really adorable. And they got lots of great links from that, a lot of social media uh, coverage as well for it, and it really helped their SEO, helped them rank higher in, in Google for a range of different life coaching and career coaching and business coaching uh, keywords. It's a rising tide that lifts all boats. It's the uh, it's a campaign that uh, lifts the overall domain authority of the site and every page benefits. Okay, awesome. Now to circle back to what you said, uh, you know, local chambers and getting links like that. I I, I hear you on like a national um, realm. You know, if it's super high competitive stuff. But like locally, there's a good chance your competitors aren't doing that stuff at all. Uh, there's a good chance that getting you from zero links to three links um, is going to leapfrog you over uh, some of these other people. Would you agree to that? You know, from a, I know you work with like the Zappos and you know some really big companies, but from a smaller aspect, like a local aspect. I, I just don't want to discourage people from from that kind of stuff because it could still be part of a needle moving activity based on, relatively speaking, their competition for you know their area. Would 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 you agree with that, or are you saying like it's not even worth the time at all? No, this is something that you absolutely have to focus on. Mm -hmm. If you see that your scores are lousy, um, in in majestic. You, this is something you need to shore up. Mm -hmm. And my invitation to the listener is to focus on what's really going to move the needle. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you could go after, uh, you know, the link from the Chamber of Commerce and the link from the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the link from the local directory and so forth. And and maybe that will help your rankings. Maybe it won't help it much. And there's there's really no downside to doing that. Mm -hmm. but if you have limited time and limited funds, why not focus on the 20% that's going to drive 80% of the benefit? Gotcha. And you and you have seen uh, great great results in coming up with like creative contests. Yeah, that, that, not that's, just contests. It's just being creative in general in terms in general. of general. Gotcha. Let, let's say that you're a plumber. And your market is, uh, I don't know, Detroit, Michigan. Well, you, you're still going to massively benefit by thinking outside the box, even though your market is very local and your, um, 
your competition isn't um, nearly as as large because you're competing with other local plumbers. But in actuality, your your competition is larger than you think because you're also competing with Yelp.com. Mm -hmm. You're competing with uh, um, you know, superpages.com, yellowpages.com, all these other sites yeah. that are um, very powerful in their link authority or their link equity, and, and they're going to probably outrank you. But if you want to punch above your weight and you're just the local plumber, instead of just chasing after the, the obvious local links, you know, which I'm, I'm not dissuading you from doing, I'm just saying really – be thoughtful about Think where you invest that. your time. And things that are going to move the needle way more should get more time and attention than things are going to, that are only going to move the needle a little bit. So let's sure. say you're the plumber and you're trying to come up with something that's really clever and outside the box and it's going to get a lot of uh, pickup, a lot of um, buzz and, and links. Maybe it is a... Um, I don't know, let's say it's a, a little expose on uh, the germs in your bathroom. All the things that you had no idea were floating around, like literally floating around like in the <laughs> air and stuff. It's not right. just, uh, you know, fecal bacteria and stuff, but it's, who knows? There could be um, uh, E. coli and, and uh salmonella and all sorts of nasty stuff in your bathroom and he could just uh do a little um you know viral video showing like he's culturing different places what, what what's the dirtiest place in your bathroom is it the toilet lid is it the the, the handle on the toilet is it the uh doorknob is it uh the floor is it the inside rim of the toilet or like what I'll tell you right now, Steph, I know you're just going off the cuff here, but that seems very interesting. <laughs> and, and and I think what you're getting at is be creative and, and write exceptional stuff that people – that's really going to, you know, garner some attention. Yep. Um, you know, exactly. and the contests are huge for obvious reasons. People win stuff, and if they're, you know, designed in a fun way, then that alone gets people interested. And this is, is an example of, an ex, you know, a very thoughtful – thought through piece of content now love your idea actually i mean i actually like really love that idea for plumbers listening take that and run with it um but okay so you 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 get that you know you know either video or written or a combination of the two or video yeah, whatever well, right well see, here's where if you see that you're getting traction in one format let's say you started with a, a, a viral article or kind of a a listicle top 10 uh, type article of these are the top 10 dirtiest places in your bathroom. Okay. And they're not where you, what, what you, what you'd think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're getting some traction for that. And you're like, okay, now I can repurpose that re um, uh, you know, re repackage it into different formats. Let's say an infographic, let's say uh, a viral video, like an ex little explainer video of the dirtiest uh, and, and cleanest places in your bathroom. Where can you, uh, you know, eat, eat off? Can you eat off the floor or off the toilet lid? Or can you, you know, are, are there certain places that you really should be using gloves <laughs> in your mm -hmm. own bathroom? And, and so that could be a very entertaining viral video. Uh, you could do man on the street interviews where you're doing it also by video, but you're asking people for their impressions. Like, where do you think it's the dirtiest in your bathroom and how dirty is your bathroom? Do you think there's salmonella and, and E. coli in your bathroom or do you, do you cover your, 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 your toothbrush? So, uh, bacteria doesn't land on it. Cause of course, you know, that's in the air all the time, 24 seven. Yeah. You could have a real, a lot of fun doing man on the street interviews in your local town, just asking random people fun questions like this. Um, so you just repackage this idea that seems to have traction into different formats. You know, it could be comics, viral videos, infographics, personality tests, quizzes, um, checklist worksheets. Um, now, on, on those things like the infographics, the blog articles themselves, the videos, the checklist. Th then what? You know, you talk about viral, but 
um, uh, you know, a lot of times if you if you build it, they yeah, will come. Well, it's not necessarily <laughs> true. You yeah, know, you got it. Right, so right. Let, let's like okay. So you got this awesome ball of twine, so to speak. This awesome various pieces of content. You want to get that rolling. What do you I mean? Are we talking about putting some ad dollars behind them? Or are we talking to do ball blogger and publisher outreach? Like, how do you get that going? Because yeah, I could see Zappos, something like that going viral. I could even see this amazing contest with this influencer going viral. But not everybody has, you know, that kind of resources or that kind of connection to like a big person. But what else can people do to get that going? Yeah. So think of this in terms of a two-pronged strategy. One is to outreach to influencers on a per piece basis, like per content piece basis, per topic basis. So in this case, the topic would be around germs and um, there's so many different bloggers that would be um, a good fit for that sort of topic, right? So there are people who have blogged about um, you know, hidden camera, uh, made videos, like watching the maid in the bathroom and in the in the uh, uh, hotel room to see what they're doing via hidden camera. And then they're doing stuff like spraying the, the glasses with uh, toxic chemicals and just wiping them off instead of washing them properly and, and not even cleaning stuff, just, you know really nasty stuff, right? And so you find people who are blo blogged about that in the past, or you find people who are into things like toxicology or virology, which is the study of viruses and, and microbiology and stuff like that. And say, oh, okay, so you, you're blogging about uh, germs, and here's a great post about germs and a little study that I did uh, just as an amateur <laughs> well, scientist and plumber. Um, you might be interested in that. So you could do some of that. You could actually find ways to collaborate with people. Let's say that you have um, an infographic or a personality test or um, some sort of well, research study or whatever, and you, you want to find somebody to collaborate with who's a very influential blogger, and you could partner together to have a customized version of that infographic or of that personality test or quiz or uh, research study. Right? So let's say that the the, uh, uh, the blogger is a major influencer in the um, I don't know, let's let's say in then the travel industry. Right? So hotels would be a very uh, appropriate um, area of focus for that travel blogger. Is people who are traveling or staying in hotels. So you you collaborate with this blogger and say, hey, uh, I, I did this study in regards to your own bathroom, and I would love to extend it to hotel bathrooms. Do you have any data on germs and uh, bad practices that the maids do and stuff like that for hotel bathrooms so that we could create a custom version of this infographic that I've already done for your own home bathroom and also, you know, top 10 checklist of things to, to look for and to clean in your bathroom, make, make sure that you don't get sick and so forth. I'd like to have a hotel travel version of that. Can we collaborate? And of course, if they want to collaborate with you, which I would imagine they, they would, because this is a, sounds like a great opportunity. And I'm just completely making this up as I go. Oh, I know. But um, you know, let's say that they're, they're into that idea. You don't even have to, ask, have to ask them for the link. They're going to want a link to those amazing resources. So they were a part of the creation of this thing. And so how do you find that person? And, and I assume you you might want to reach out to more than just one. Uh, yeah. How do you, how do you, can you walk somebody through how to, I know there might be some tools, I believe. Oh yeah. Influencer yeah, yeah, finding yeah. tools. I think what buzz sumo does buzz it as sumo. well. Buzz uh, um, there's, there's also a follower wonk to find uh, uh, Twitter uh, power users, influencers. So for example, let's say I'm looking for uh, somebody in a particular niche or industry and the tool follower wonk will search through all the Twitter bios for that keyword. That's really cool. And they'll display their um, 
their metrics uh, right there so you can see how many followers they have, how many tweets, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so you can quickly find influencers in your topic that way. Um, I use Pitchbox as well, and that's a, a, a full suite of tools for doing influencer outreach, but part of the process is to build your prospect list of influencers. So you can set a minimum threshold of, um, you know, let's say MozRank or Majestic Trustflow, and um, you can put in a keyword and um, it will build a list of, of influential bloggers in that topic space that have that minimum trust flow score and then you can outreach to them using Pitchbox. So yeah, there's some great tools that will help you do this. You could do it manually, but it would be painful uh, mm -hmm. to try and find these people. You, as you say, you don't just build it and, and expect that they will come. You build it and then you promote it. So you create this amazing thing, this, this remarkable content piece and you don't invest everything in that. You see if you get some traction, then you build on it. You, you repackage and repurpose and create different uh, add-on uh, campaigns or content pieces. Uh, but if, you, if you're starting to see traction with it, then you want to continue to invest in it. And um, yeah, so build the thing, the, uh, the initial prototype or the first um, campaign in that topic space. You see if it gets traction by pushing it out to some power users and influencers on, on social media and um, emailing them and seeing what you can do to collaborate with them. And if that starts to show some serious traction, then you double down and invest more time and energy and, and budget on uh, outreach to these uh, influencers and Ideally, you get a power user in your hip pocket, like I had Jeremy Schumani helping to promote the contest uh, for Overnight Prints. You get somebody like that to help you, like um, another example, uh, uh, Intuit for their TurboTax uh, division. They did a, a contest, uh, a tax wrap contest a, a while ago and they got Vanilla Ice to be their spokesman. <laughs> and that was genius. Just that, that was so remarkable. I mean, yeah, it's just surprising. <laughs> a, little, a little side note, my wife was uh, in the room when Vanilla Ice got the phone call. He I think he's from like Arlington or Dallas where she grew up and uh, was in the room when he got the phone call for his first like big contract or whatever. Oh, that's <laughs> so, funny. Little side note there about vanilla ice. Uh, right, right. Uh, so you can imagine that you know he's probably affordable <laughs> <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. and it, he's still got name recognition, and there's a surprising kind of remarkability in the use of his name. So let's say that you had uh, vanilla ice's ten tips for uh, remodeling your bathroom. It's like what? What does Vanilla Ice have to do with remodeling <laughs> my bathroom? Well, actually, well, first of all, it's kind of there, there's some uh, counterintuitiveness and some cognitive dissonance there when you hear this rapper mm -hmm. from the '80s uh, t talking about remodeling your bathroom. But what many listeners, but maybe a few, know is that he actually has a show on the DIY network about doing uh, home remodeling and and uh, doing makeovers of, of uh, your rooms and, 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 and uh, your, your abode. So it's relevant when you know a little bit more of the backstory behind what Vanilla Ice is up to these days. Mm -hmm. And that would be tangentially related enough for that plumber to say, well, that, that's a pretty cool idea and that could get me a lot of play. And you don't need um, uh, a whole lot of, of um, um, email kind of outreach to start to get that thing taken off. Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah. I mean, that's certainly remarkable. Yeah. And um, it will take on a life of its own, especially awesome. if you do it well. I mean, that's the thing is you got to you got to execute well on the stuff. You don't put garbage content out there 
poorly produced stuff, bad audio. Um, you know, so it, it's annoying to hear his crackling sounds in, in the background or whatever. It, it's just be professional and, and, uh, do it right. And, and not, um, kind of half, uh, half cock. Gotcha. Well, uh, kind of nearing the end here. Do you have any other, uh, parting thoughts before I have to let you go and, and to recap everybody, I want to kind of tie all this together and then I'll let stuff on that any, any parting thoughts we talked about the on some of the on-page stuff some of the on-page stuff so again um you know you can follow an expert like stefan and, and he has lots and lots of information as we read in his bio big books other information other blogs to follow so you can kind of and i'm sure on his site there'll probably be some checklists on, on other items so you know get all your on-page stuff taken care of and, and we've identified some of the lowest hanging fruit to take care of first then we're going to be looking at, you know, you know, remarkable content. Get it out there. Uh, it could be in the form of quizzes. It could be a contest. It could be written word. It could be videos. It could be whatnot. And then you're going to want to get it out there. But, uh, and, but not to forget, then you're back to on-page again because this stuff's on-page. So you're going to want to make sure you interlink everything correctly. Make sure you tag it as you go. Uh, what we talked about earlier is not a one-time thing and then you're done. It's uh, once you put new pages – you got a new page you got to take care of. So interlink that appropriately to the service pages and the money pages that you will bring you business when people land on them and the ones that you want to get ranked. So it's kind of an all tied together, all forever, ongoing, forever thing. So, uh, you know, you could get a boost. And if you don't do anything else for a year, you're most likely going to drop. So, um, Stefan, feel free to correct anything I said, if you'd like, good or recap. good recap. So, um, yeah, but essentially the, the, place where most people get stuck is what do I do next? I'm a little overwhelmed. I feel um, like this is outside my area of expertise and then they end up doing nothing, which is really unfortunate because every day that goes by, you're, you're essentially flushing money down a toilet. So you continue with the plumber analogy. Um, yeah. So stop that. Really take ownership in your own success. And uh, that means you're going to need to invest a little bit of time in your own learning. So you're an educated consumer of these kinds of services like SEO. Like, you know, you can uh, certainly uh, hire somebody such as myself to help you with your SEO. You still need to know enough to ask the right questions and to be able to guide that SEO to execute on the things that you want to get you the outcome that you want. So okay. um, there's a great checklist on my website on stephanspencer.com. It's uh, called the uh, SEO hiring blueprint. So for hiring, uh, uh, finding, screening, and hiring, and then onboarding an SEO, whether that's a contractor or an agency. Um, so that's a really great free download that's stephanspencer.com. Go into the resources section under guides and white papers. It'll be there. And then also SEO BS detector you'll find in that same area on my site, which has trick questions that you can slip into the interview process while you're uh, trying to suss out whether these uh, SEOs you're speaking to know their stuff or they're just um, talking above your head and hoping that you don't know the right answers. This has a cheat sheet of all the right answers to some trick questions that if they answer it wrong, it's very clear to you that they're not up to speed on their SEL or they're just blowing smoke. So those are two really great resources. And then also to learn a bit more about your SEO, um, like what's happening with your own website, getting your own Google search console uh, account and that sort of stuff, like really basic but crucial stuff things that are not overly um, uh, onerous for a non-super technical person to take on. I have a five-day SEO challenge. It's called the SEO Maximizer Challenge. It's also at stephanspencer.com, and it's completely free. Each day of the five days, you get a different challenge to complete, and you post uh, in, in a private Facebook group your evidence that you did that day's challenge, and then you get some really cool bonuses 
for uh, doing that. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's a really, really cool thing. So you can go directly to stephanspencer.com slash five day challenge, uh, all one word, the number five, and then D-A-Y-C-H-A-L-L-E-N-G-E to uh, sign up for the five day challenge. All right. Awesome. And if you want to follow Stefan on Twitter, it's S S well S Spencer at S Spencer as it's announced. Okay, well awesome, Stefan. Uh, a lot of great pointers, a lot of great info, and uh you gave some other great resources it's impossible to cover here <laughs> during this time. So I'm yeah, glad you gave those. So <laughs> everybody please do yeah, exactly. Uh head on over there and uh you uh will catch up to speed on everything you need to know or at the very least know how to um, team up with someone who knows their chops in the SEO world. All right. Well, awesome, Stefan. Uh, until next time, and uh, appreciate your time today. All right. Thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you on Google. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye.